Hello again and welcome to Data Mining with Weka back here in New Zealand. In this class, class 4, we're going to look at some pretty cool machine learning methods. Uh, we're going to look at linear regression, classification by regression, logistic regression, support vector machines and ensemble learning. The last few of these are contemporary methods that haven't been around very long. They are kind of state-of-the-art machine learning methods. Remember, there's five classes in this course, so next week is class five, the last class, and we'll be kind of tidying things up and summarizing things then. So uh, you're well over halfway through, you're doing well, just hang on in there. Okay, in this lesson, we're going to start by looking at classification boundaries for different machine learning methods. We're going to use Weka's boundary visualizer, which is another Weka tool that we haven't encountered yet. I'm going to use a two-dimensional data set. I've prepared uh, iris.2d.arf just over, let me just open this up here. It's a two-dimensional version of the iris data set. I took the regular iris data set and deleted a couple of attributes, sepal length and sepal width, leaving me with this 2D data set and the class. And we're going to look at that using the boundary visualizer. And you get that from this visualization menu on the Weka chooser. There's a lot of tools uh, in Weka, so we're just going to look at this one here, the boundary visualizer. And I'm going to open the same file in the boundary visualizer, the two-dimensional iris data, iris.2d.arf. And here we've got a plot of the data. You can see we're plotting petal width on the y-axis against petal length on the x-axis. This is a picture of the data set with the three classes, Setosa in red, um, Verticolor in green, and Virginica in blue. I'm going to choose a classifier. Let's begin with the 1R classifier, which is in rules. I'm going to plot training data and just let it rip. And the colored diagram here shows the decision boundaries with the training data superimposed on it. Let's look at what 1R does to this data set in the Explorer. We'll go to Classify and choose 1R and uh, let it go. And 1R has chosen to split on petal width. If it's less than a certain amount, we get a Setosa, Intermediate, a Versicolor, greater than the upper boundary, a Virginica. And that's the same as what's being showed here. We're splitting on petal width, and if it's less than a certain amount, we get a Setosa in the middle, a Versicolor, and at the top, a Virginica. This is a spatial representation of the decision boundary that 1R creates on this data set. And that's what the boundary visualizer does. It draws decision boundaries. It shows here that 1R chooses an attribute, in this case petal width, to split on. It might have chosen petal length, in which case we'd have vertical decision boundaries. But either way, we're going to get stripes from 1R. I'm going to go ahead and look at some boundaries for other schemes. Let's look at IBK, which is a lazy classifier. That's the instance-based learner we looked at in the last class. And uh, I'm just going to uh, run that. And here we get a different kind of pattern. I'll just stop it there. We've got diagonal lines. So uh, down here are the Setosas underneath this diagonal line, and the Versicolors in the intermediate region, and the Virginicas by and large in the top right-hand corner. I remember what 1R does. It takes a test instance. Let's say we had an instance here, just on this side of the boundary in the red. And uh, we then it chooses the nearest instance to that. Uh, that would be this one, I guess. That would be the nearest instance. That's kind of nearer than this one here. So this is a red point. But if I were to cross over the boundary here, it would choose a green point, because this the green class, because this would be the nearest instance then. So if you think about it, this boundary goes halfway between this uh, nearest red point and this nearest green point. Similarly, up here, if we take a point up here, I guess the two nearest instances are uh, this blue one and this green one, and uh, this blue one's closer. So this, in this case, the boundary goes along this straight line here. 
Now I can see it's not just a single line, this is a piecewise linear line. So this part of the boundary goes exactly halfway between these two points, quite close to it. And down here, the boundary goes exactly halfway between these two points. It's the perpendicular bisector of the line joining these points. So we get a piecewise linear boundary made up of little pieces. Kind of interesting to see what happens if we change the parameter. We look at, say, five nearest neighbors instead of just one. And now we get a slightly blurry picture. I'll just stop it there. We get a blurry picture because whereas down here, say, in the pure red region, the five nearest neighbors to a point here are all red points. If you look into the intermediate region here, then the nearest neighbors to a point here, uh, you know, this is going to be in the five, and this might be another one of the five, and there might be a couple more down here in the five. So we get an intermediate color here. Uh, IBK takes a vote. So if we had three reds and two greens, then we'd sort of be in the red region, and that would be depicted as this kind of um, darker red here. If we had uh, the other way around, with more greens than reds, would be in the green region. So we get a kind of a blurring of these kind of boundaries. These are kind of a probabilistic description of the boundary. Let me just uh, change k to 20 and see what happens. Now we get the same kind of shape, but with even more blurry sort of boundaries. The boundary visualizer reveals the way that machine learning schemes are thinking, if you like, their kind of internal representation of the data set. And they kind of help you think about the sorts of things that machine learning methods do. Let's choose another scheme. I'm going to choose Naive Bayes here. Now, when we talked about Naive Bayes, we only talked about discrete attributes. With continuous attributes, well, I'm going to choose a supervised discretization method. Don't worry about this detail. It's uh, the most common way of using naive Bayes with, uh, with numeric attributes. So uh, let's have a look at that kind of picture. This is kind of interesting. You know, when you think about naive Bayes, it treats each of the two attributes as contributing equally and independently to the decision. So it sort of decides what it should be along this dimension and decides what it should be along this dimension and kind of multiplies the two together. Remember all that multiplication that went on in Naive Bayes. So when you multiply these things together, you get a kind of a checkerboard pattern of probabilities, multiplying up the probabilities. That's because the attributes are being treated independently. That's a very different kind of decision binary from what we saw with instance-based learning. And that's what's so good about the boundary visualizer. It helps you to kind of think about how things are working inside. I'm going to do one more example. I'm going to do uh, J48, which is in trees. Let me just uh, run this. And here we get this kind of structure. Let's take a look at what happens in the Explorer if we choose J48. Well, we get this little decision tree split first on petal width. If it's less than 0.6, it's a Satosa for sure. And then split again on petal width. If it's greater than 1.7, it's a Virginica for sure. And then in between, split on petal length and then again on petal width, getting a mixture of Verticolors and Virginicas. So we split first on petal width, that's this split here. Remember the vertical axis is the petal width axis. If it's less than a certain amount, it's a Satosa for sure. Then we split again on the same axis. If it's greater than a certain amount, it's a Virginica for sure. If it's in the intermediate region, we split on the other axis, that is petal length. And down here, it's a Verticolor for sure, and here we're going to split again on the petal width attribute. Let's just change the min num obj parameter controls the minimum size of the nodes, of, of the leaves. So if we increase that, we're going to get a simpler kind of tree.
We discussed this parameter in one of the lessons of class 3. So if we uh, run now, then we get a simpler version corresponding to the simpler rules we get with this parameter set. Or we could set the parameter to a higher value, say 10. And run it again, and we get even simpler rules, very similar to the rules produced by 1R. Okay, so we've looked at the classification boundaries. Classification classifiers create boundaries in instant space, and different classifiers have different capabilities for carving up instant space. That's called the bias of the classifier, the way in which it's capable of carving up the instant space. Uh, we looked at 1R, IBK, Naive Bayes, and J48, and found completely different biases, completely different ways they carve up the instant space. Now, of course, this kind of visualization is restricted to numeric attributes and to two-dimensional plots. So it's not a very general tool, but it certainly helps you think about these different classifiers. You can uh, read about uh, classification boundaries in section 17.3 of the course text, and now off you go and do the activity associated with this lesson. Good luck. We'll see you later. Bye.